<laughs> oh hi, you're already here. Uh, yeah, sorry that my uh, back is not in focus, but that is the entire point of this video. This is about back focus. Again, because yes, I already did a video on back focus, but that focused specifically on the Edge, no, not on the Edge, on the classical C8. I also did a video about the differences between the classical C8 and the Edge HD, in which I already pointed out that the Edge HD has a lens in the baffle tube. Which means that even in native focal length, you need to get to a specific distance between the edge of the Edge HD and the sensor of your camera. Um, and if you want to add other elements into the mix, like for instance an off-axis guider, which makes sense if you are going to work on native focal length, then things get even more difficult to reach that specific uh, back focus. So this is what this video is all about. So, back focus. What is back focus? Back focus is that perfect distance that your camera needs to be in relation to the latest lens element of your telescope. In fact, most Schmidt Cassegrain telescopes do not have a lens element um, at the end of the, uh, of the telescope. But this one, the Edge HD, does. It has a lens element that flattens the um, the field of view. Uh, basically the same as is being the case with refractors that have a built-in flattener or if you add a flattener to your imaging train. Okay, so if you are not in correct back focus then you will see certain types of defects. If you are too close to your um, latest lens element. You will see the stars move away radially and if you are too far away then the stars at the edges of your field of view seem to curve around the center point of the, uh, of the image. You definitely do not want that to happen. So you need to reach the uh, perfect distance. For most telescopes there is a factory default of 55 millimeters. However, if you are using a Smith Cassegrain telescope, specifically a Celestron, which is the only one that I know of, um, if you have a reducer on it, then it will have not 55 but 105 millimeters of focal distance that you need to, or back focus distance that you need to create. Um, this is the focal reducer that fits with this telescope and it's a 0.7 reducer. So to the end of this we need to add 105 millimeters for it to reach the perfect distance. Um, so you can just use the uh, provided distance rings that are coming with your camera. You can uh, uh, attach those together in a certain way that you get the uh, correct distance. Let me see. Um, well, I don't have to show it. You just have to look up to that uh, other video that I've, it's over there, I believe, <laughs> uh, that, that I have made about getting the correct focal, uh, no, correct back focus distance. But back then I was guiding using a guide telescope. Um, smaller telescope attached on the top of this uh, dovetail. With the focal lengths that you are using with a telescope system like this, it is however advised to use something called an off-axis guider. And an off-axis guider obviously has to fit within 
that 105 millimeters of uh, space that you have. Let's build up the image train that is used with the reduced system using a off-axis guider. And then we need to add the, I put it in a bag so I don't get oh, too much dust on it. This is the uh, off-axis guider and I need to uh, put that over here and to attach it to the correct distance you need to use this part that came with the off-axis guider. Somebody made a point of mentioning that there is an arrow on this, but I don't know where that is. But um, if you attach the off-axis guider, always make sure that this screw over here, which is the um, little Allen key that allows the prism to be uh, drop down or raised to point outward. And you can just attach this to the image train like so. And then we need to build the rest of the image train. I like to use what is known as a filter drawer. Also explained it already in my previous video and this has a distance of two point one centimeters. Um, it doesn't fit on this uh, natively, this, so first we need to step down. And there are these nice rings added to the off-axis guider that will fit to the to the um, filter drawer, and then we can add this to the system as well. And this has a thread that simply I'll get screwed on to this side. There we go. So now we have a camera, a filter drawer, an uh, off-axis guider and the correct distance 105 millimeters from the end of the producer to the sensor. And there's, by the way, one thing that you need to uh, make sure when you are applying an off-axis guider, and that is that the off-axis guider has this prism that is extending into the field of view. So you need to make sure that your sensor is not like this, but is like this. So the end of the prism is protruding, is that a correct word, into the field of view of the uh, telescope, but not impinging, I'm using difficult words now, <laughs> into the uh, field of view of the sensor. So make sure it is um, in 90 degrees directly above the long side of the sensor. If you make sure that that is the case, which is by the way marked by this little um, black spot on the camera, if you align that perfectly with your guide camera, then you can't miss. But what if you want to change the uh, framing, for instance? Well, if that is the case, am I now unscrewing it? Yes, I am. So if you want to make little changes to the framing, you can just simply unscrew this part a bit and then you have a certain degree of freedom to change the entire assembly so that in every rotation the camera of the guide, you, uh, the guide camera is always in that same orientation as the um, yeah, fixed to that long side of the, uh, of the sensor. Let's detach 
this part of the assembly again because we are now going to remove the reducer and this time we will build up an image train that is usable natively. Let's uh, put on the dust caps immediately again. I will definitely have to clean them, but uh, that's the price I have to pay for these videos. Okay. Um, let me first show you how I got to the uh, correct distance using my focal, no, my, my uh, two inch visual back. So I added this to the back of the telescope. And as I mentioned, this is 4.8. I don't know exactly. Um, by the way, um, for, with the reducer, we needed to get to 105 millimeters. Without a reducer, you need to get to 133.35 millimeters. Don't know why that specific number, but that's what Celestron says. And you need to get within a certain degree of freedom, close to that number. Okay, so um, adding this visual back allows me to attach things directly to the uh, telescope side. So I have this two inch nose piece which has a small ridge. I covered that in my previous video as well which adds a little distance to the uh, assembly that I attach on here. And this I can add to a ring that comes with my uh, off-axis guider. And in this case, I need to have the ring that is the shortest. Let me look that up in the manual of the off-axis guider. This is a ring that is 4.5 millimeters of back focus distance. So this adds 4.5 millimeters. And then I can add this entire assembly to it again. And now I am at 133.35 millimeters back focus distance. But there's a but. This is a nose piece adapter. So this entire thing now just sits at the mercy of a compressive force of that ring that attaches on this camera assembly which weighs a considerable amount of mass. And I'm getting terrified that, especially when I'm imaging at the zenith, that my uh, entire camera assembly will at some point drop out of the telescope. So I've bought yet another a piece of equipment that is known as the Celestron HHDT adapter. I will leave a link in the description below. And this part can attach itself to the end of the telescope. And as you already see, it's a bit longer than my nose piece adapter. And that is because there's a part that comes with this T adapter that will live nicely into the box, probably for the rest of its life. So I will get rid of this two inch SCT adapter. And I will add this to the mix. And now I have five centimeters already. So this nose piece part can be removed again. There we go. And I think this ring is too large indeed. But there's another four and a half millimeter ring which is M42, which is the size 
of this piece over here. There we go. And we attach this again. And we have a screwed on, very rigid part. And a very perfectly distant back focus. I guess then it is now time to show some examples. And the weather is really awful. Um, might be partly because I bought astronomy equipment, don't know. But uh, yeah, I will have to wait for some opportunities to test out this native focal length image train. And I think I will go for M1, the Crab Nebula. I photographed it before in the F7 configuration as I showed before with the reducer. It came out pretty nice, but I want to get closer. F10 will mean that I will have to yeah, take more images to get an equal amount of light into the image, but yeah, that's uh, a known fact, of course. So wish me luck. I hope this video was instructive, that you found your own configuration. There are a lot of options. You can uh, skip the uh, filter drawer by just adding the uh, M42 21 millimeters uh, adapter ring that comes with every ZWO camera. And even with the off-axis guider, a lot of rings and configurable uh, things uh, get uh, added. You, 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 there's so much uh, to do here. And if there is a slight gap still to, uh, to fill, then ZWO provides these yeah, paper-thin spaces even. Lots of them, some a little bit thicker. This one is, I think, half a millimeter thick. Uh, and they will um, allow you to get to that perfect back focus distance. But uh, with this system, I think um, I am already perfect enough. But that is something that the images will have to show. So, once again, thanks for watching. See you next time.